The Zephyrs. My teacher ate my homework by Dan Greenberg. Chapter 1. I know that substitute teachers have a tough job, but does that give one the right to buy me on the butt? I guess maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. My name is Zed, I'm 10 and a half, and I'm in the 5th grade at the Horry Tyler School for Boys. That's in New York City, by the way. My parents are divorced, and I spend about half my time with my dad. It's when I'm with that, my dad that the weird things happen, like this time I started telling you about. My regular science and homeroom teacher, Mrs. Kamaleva, was out sick. Instead, we had a substitute teacher, Mrs. Wolf. 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 As soon as I saw her, I thought there was something strange about her. She, wore, she was short, dark, and very hairy. There seemed to be stubble on her cheeks from shaving, but it was also on her nose and forehead. She didn't stand upright. She sort of crushed over. And when I turned in my son's homework, well, I can't be sure of this, but I thought I heard the, her growl. Excuse me, ma'am, I said, did you just growl? She gave me an angry look. It was the wrong thing to say. I realized that as soon as I said this. What is your name, young man? She asked. Uh, it's Zach. Well, Zach, said she, she said, I was most certainly not growing. I was clearing my throat, and I'd like to see you after class. Uh-oh. Well, that's what you get for asking a teacher if she was growing. Okay, that's the worst she could do to me, kick me out of class just because I asked if she was growing. No way. When said class was over the, and everybody flew out of the classroom, I walked up to the teacher's desk. Mrs. Wolfwitz, I said, what did you want to, miss, want, want to see me about? Mrs. Wolfwitz glared at me over the top of her classes. Then she yawned. While her mouth was open, I caught a peek at her teeth. They looked a little more faggy and toothy. I wonder whether I should mention it. I realized it would probably be another bad mistake. Why, Mrs. Wolvitz, that what big teeth you have would definitely be the wrong thing to say at this point. Did you hand in your homework? asked Mrs. Wolvitz. Yes, ma'am, I said I handed it before class. Then where is it? I pointed at my homework. It was lying on her desk right in front of her. Right here. Right there. I said, right where? She said, I, right there. See, I pointed again. She bent low over my homework. Then she did something very weird. She licked it. I decided to pretend I hadn't seen her to do that. Then she did something even weirder. She opened her mouth, grabbed my homework in the enormous teeth, and began to chew it up. I watched her in my homework without saying anything. What could I say? I was scared to mention what she was doing, but I was also scared not to. Soon she pretty much eaten the whole thing. Finally, I couldn't stand it anymore. Excuse me, ma'am, I said, but why did you do that? Why did I do what? She asked in my homework. Don't be ridiculous, she said. Why would I eat your homework? Are you dining you ate it? I asked. Absolutely, she said, and I was thinking not to make such insulting occasions again. I happen to be a highly respect substitute teacher. In fact, I've received awards for my substitute teaching. Schools actually hope their regular teachers will get sick, just so I, am, I can substitute for them. I knew I should let it go, but I just couldn't. Mrs. Wolfitz, if you did it in my homework, where is it? She was really mad. You absolutely failed to bring it in, didn't you? She said, Mrs. Wolfitz, I said quietly, you know, you know that isn't true. Are you calling me a liar? She asked. No, ma'am. I'm just saying I brought my homework in and you ate it. Look, there's a tiny piece of it still stuck in the corner of your mouth. See? I reached out to get it. Mrs. Wolvis almost bit my finger off. I ran up there before she could find any more parts of me to taste. Chapter 2 Yes, Zach, what is it? said Mr. Underpants. 
He's the new principal of my school. I had gone to see him right after Mrs. Wolfis nearly bit my finger off. Sir, I'm having kind of problem with my substitute teacher. Mrs. Wolfis? Yes, sir, I said. Fine woman, Mrs. Wolfis. Fine woman, said Mrs. Underpants. What a words for her substitute teacher. I hear. We've been hoping one of our teachers would get sick so she could substitute here. And Mr. Common Level was good enough to oblige us. What sort of problem are you having with Mrs. Wolves? Well, sir, she kind of ate my homework. Excuse me? I said Mrs. Wolves ate my homework. Mr. Underpants frowned. That's preposterous. He said, why on earth would Mrs. Wolves eat your homework? I have no idea, I said. All I know is that she did. Well, that's a poppycock, said Mr. Underpants. Sure, poppycock, said I'm very disappointed in you. Coming in here and telling me such a poppycock. I'd like your father to come to my office for a conference tomorrow. But sir, Mr. Underpants checked his schedule. 8 a.m. I'd like to see your, you both. Oh boy, now I was really in trouble. I was pretty sure that I believed that Mrs. Wolves ate my homework. Still, he was going to mad at me for making him give a valuable work time to come to school. At lunch, I told my friend Spencer everything that had happened. We were moving down the cafeteria line with our trays. I told him about how Mrs. Wolves ate my homework. She scares me, I said. I mean, she has three sharp fangs and she grills. And isn't she awfully hairy for a lady? Spencer nodded. Then he checked his watch. It's a cool one that tells you the date. The faces of the moon and stuff like that. You know, there's a full moon tomorrow night, said Spencer. So, I said, moving down the desert, moving down to deserts, I grab a slice of banana cream pie. So, seeing what you just told me about Mrs. Wolfis, she said, sorry, said Spencer, Mrs. Wolfowitz. Aren't you beginning to suspect she might be a werewolf? I finished Spencer's sentence. Spencer nodded. He didn't act like this was some terrible problem. He acted like I given him his this huge gift. Zach, this is so cool, said Spencer. What's so cool about it? Cool about it, I asked. I paid for much my lunch and started looking around for a place to sit. Well, we can follow her around with my camcorder and catch her doing something wolfy. Says Spencer then, when Mrs. Common Levin gets back, we turn in the tip for the extra critic size project. Do you realize how great it would be? A, a video tape of a real werewolf will probably both get a pluses. Wow, I said, hang on a second. All I said was that Mrs. Wolf was a my homer. That's all. And that she's kind of strange looking. That she says, Spencer, how well do I know you? As well as anybody, I guess. We sat down. And you mean to tell me you didn't think she's a werewolf? Said Spencer. Who's a werewolf? Said a voice at the table just behind us. I turn around. It is Vernon. Vernon Matifold, the rich kid in our class who sweats well. He's the biggest babble boss in school. And he's always trying to get me in trouble. His tray was loaded with food, food mostly de desserts. Nobody's well with multiple. I said, nobody? For a repeat, but I definitely heard you say that Mrs. Wolves ate your homework, and I definitely hear Spencer say that she was a werewolf. If you distantly heard us say that, I said, then why did you ask? I wanted to be sure, said Vernon, boy, wait till I tell the kids in the class that our substitute teacher is a werewolf. Ah, oh, please don't do that, Vernon, I said. Why not, she said, because you wouldn't want to get an incoherent woman in trouble. She doesn't sound so inconstant to me, said Vernon. What did you do when she ate your homework? Look, I said, I really don't want this to go any farther. If you tell, if I tell you what happened, will you promise not to tell anybody else? 
on my word of honor, said Vernon. On his word of honor, that was love. That idea and Vernon Tifoa had any honor. I, it was probably a stupid idea to trust him to do anything, but I never seen to learn. So I told him everything that happened. And in front of me and Spencer, he saw on his words of honor that he wouldn't tell. Well, if he did, I'll tell everybody Vernon was a bad weather. Chapter 3 That night, I told my dad what happened to my homework. That is great. He always understands whatever I tell him. I don't understand, Zach said that. You think your teacher is a werewolf just because she ate your homework? Maybe she just likes to eat paper. Some people do. I never cared anybody who liked to eat paper. I said, really, Santa? I've been known to nibble paper myself, especially if I'm writing an article and it isn't going too well. It's kind of a nervous habit. Just don't see what eating your homework makes her werewolf. werewolf. Well, that wasn't the only thing I said. Also, she's very dark and very hairy. You know the stuff? Stubble you get on your cheeks after you shave your bird beard, well, it's all over her face, even on her nose, and she doesn't stand up straight. She's kind of crouches, and she has this really long piece. I know lots of people who are dark and hairy, who don't stand up straight, and who have long teeth, said that, but none of them is a werewolf, at least none of them has bit me. The bidding probably comes next, I said. Anyway, that it doesn't matter whether you believe she's a werewolf or not. What I'm trying to tell you is that the principal wants to see both of us in his office tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. sharp. Is Mr. Wolf is going to be there too? I don't know why. Well, I said that if she is, maybe I could interview her. I've never done an interview sorry, done an interview with a werewolf before. By the time we got to the principal's office the next morning, I was pretty nervous. I didn't know what the principal would do to me if we couldn't convince him I was telling the truth. Well, well, thanks for coming, sir, said Mr. Arnapan, shaking hands with Dad. Sit down, sit down. Dad and I both sat down opposite the principal. Good, said Mr. Anpes. Now, Zach, tell us what happened. I already told you. I said, Mrs. Wolves ain't my homework. Hmm, said Mr. Anpes. I see you haven't changed your story. Why should I change my story? I said, that's what happened. The principal turned to that. What do you say about this? He asked. If Zach says his teacher ate his homework, then I believe him. The principal frowned. I think he tried to so hard to get Mrs. Wolves as a teacher. He now refused to hear anything bad about her. Would I have to say I made up the story about Mrs. Wolves? So, sorry. So I wouldn't be sus suspended. Have you asked Mrs. Wolves? About this matter, that us, you mean, have I asked her whether she ate a student's homework? Right, said that. Well, of course not, said Mrs. Underpants. That would be uh, insulting. Don't you think it's insulting to Dad to believe his lying to you? That us, but Zach is a child, said Mr. Underpants. Mrs. Wolf is an adult. So you endlessly take an adult side against a child, said that. That doesn't sound as though you have a high opinion of ch children, which would be a disappointing thing to see in a principal. I wonder what the school's board of directions would think about that. A little vein stood out of the principal's forehead. It's a survey. You know what I'm thinking, said Mr. Underpants with a nasty smile. Well, what, said that? I'm thinking perhaps that ought to be suspended for lying about the teacher. I shall notify you on my decision. Then Mr. Underpants stood up. The meeting was obviously over. Chapter 4 Dad, you're a fantastic, I said, 
as soon as we got out the out, out of the principal office. Things were sticking out for me, and if I got suspended, it was worth it. Oh, I don't think you'll get suspended, said that, but I steer clear of Mrs. Wolwick for today if I were you. So that wrote me a note. I skipped both homework and science class that day. That afternoon during study hall, Spencer and I went to the library and did some research on werewolves. I tried to tell him about the meeting with Mr. Underpants, but the library kept shushing us. We learned lots of cool stuff. La like what? You can become a werewolf if another werewolf bites you. Or if somebody casts a spell on you. Or if you're born to a werewolf mom. 2. Werewolves don't get sick or get old or die. But you can kill them if you get them in the heart of the brain. Chapter 3. Oh, sorry. Sorry. People who became werewolves can be cured, cured unless they taste human blood or flesh, f flesh first. Yuck. 4. Werewolves mostly change into wool from during the full moon, and Spencer was right. Tonight were, there was going to be a full moon. After school, Spencer and I waited in the bushes till Mrs. Wolfwood come up, came up. Spencer had gotten his camcorder, camcorder out of his locker and was putting in a new cassette. While we waited, I told him that what Dad said in the principal office. He was pretty impressed. Your dad really has a lot of guts to threaten old underpants, said Spencer. I don't really think he was threatening him, I said. You don't? Well, maybe he was, I said. You think underpants is going to suspend me? Oh, almost certainly, said Spencer. Are you serious, I said. Spencer, what I'll do if he suspend me? So sharp. Go another school, I guess, he said. We waited and waited. Mrs. Wolfis did a came. Come out. Why isn't she coming out? I said. I asked. I don't know, she said Spencer. Maybe she left by the back entrance. Why would she do that? I asked. Or maybe, yes, maybe she's waiting till it gets dark, said Spencer. Maybe Spencer was right. Werewolves don't like sunlight. Maybe Mrs. Wolfwood was afraid of the sunlight. Maybe she really was a werewolf. The sun gave me the creeps. We continued to wait. After a while, the sun set and it started to get dark. This is silly, I said. She's already left by the back entrance. We're standing here for nothing. You want to leave? Spencer asked. What if she comes right after we leave? She's not here anymore, I said. I'm getting cold. I think we should go home. Whatever you say, said Spencer. He started packing up his camcorder. Just then, the front door of the school opened. Look, I whispered. It was Mrs. Wolfish. She, she looked around nervously as she walked down the steps to the sidewalk. Spencer and I got crushed lower into the bushes. And you wanted to leave, Spencer whispered. Oh, shut up, I whispered. Mrs. Wolfish started down the street. We let her get half a block ahead of us, then we started to follow. You think she's going home, I said. Who should I know, said Spencer. A sudden ice-cold wind came up and blew dead leaves in my face. I shivered and brushed them away. The sun had set already, but it wasn't that very dark out. I looked up at the, at the sky and realized why. It was a full moon, just as Spencer said. Mrs. Wolfus walked along the street for several blocks in that strange hunched over walk of hers. We followed, trying to keep out of sight. Then Mrs. Wolfus turned into an alley. Why in the world she is going down that alley? I whispered. I don't know, said Spencer. Maybe she lives there. Let's follow. We waited about 30 seconds. Then we followed. When we got to the corner, we picked down the alley. By the light of the full moon, we saw an incredible sight. In back of the butcher shop, Mrs. Wolfus had turned over a big plastic car garbage can. She was digging in the garbage. After a while, she found 
wad and looked like a huge bone. Spencer he said, shoot this. We crept forward and hide behind another garbage can. Spencer took out his camcorder and began to shut. Mr. Wolfers held the bone in both paws. I made hands and began to gnaw it. Do you believe this? I whispered. Spencer giggled. Yeah, I whispered. Can you imagine what the, that old bone test tastes like? No, said Spencer. But I can't press the taste. The A plus this tape is going to get us. Mr. Wolfie stopped chewing and looked around nervously. Maybe she heard us whispering. We dug down behind the garbage can. After a minute or so, we crept, picked out. She was gone. Oh no, I said, we've lost her. No, you haven't, said a voice behind us. I turned around. It was Mrs. Wolfie. The end of chapter 1 to chapter 4. The Zach Fox. My teacher and my homework by Dan Grimberg. Chapter 5. Mrs. Wolfwitz had a crazy smile on her face. Her eyes were presently popping out of her head. I was so scared I was awful I peed my pants. What are you doing here? she asked. Are you spying on me? S spying? I repeated. No, of course not, Mrs. Wolfwitz. Then why is Spencer holding that camcorder? She said. Asked which camcorder I asked. She pointed. Dad camcorder, she said. Oh, the dad camcorder, I said. Yes, dad com camcorder, said Mrs. Wolfitz. Well, there's a very simple explanation for that, said Spencer. And what is it, said Mrs. Wolfitz. We are making a doc documentary, said Spencer, on Alice. Is that so? said Mrs. Wolfitz. Th that happens to be the honest t truth, said Spencer. Do you know what Mr. Underpants told me this afternoon? said Mrs. Wolfitz. He said Vernon Mantifold told him that Zach thinks I'm a werewolf. A we werewolf? I repeated. That that's ridiculous, ma'am. You a werewolf? I burst into a hysterical laugh. Suddenly, Mrs. Wolfitz Roll a terrible grow. She lunged straight straight at me. I sidestepped her. She she tripped and fell. Run, Spencer! Run! I shouted. I ran. Spencer followed. We raced down the alley as fast as we could. Mrs. Wolfie slopped after us, growing louder than ever. When we got to the end of the alley, she turned left onto the street and ran back in the direction of school. It was brighter on the street than in the alley. I prayed somebody would see us and save us. Running for his life, Spencer pulled ahead of me. We were running so fast it was hard to breathe. My heart was pounding away in my chest. My lungs were practically bursting. I looked back. Mrs. Wolfis was gaining on us. About a man in a taxi was walking his dog. The dog saw us and growled. Behind us, Mrs. Wolfis growled at the dog. Help us, I shouted ahead of, of the, to the man in the taxi. We are being chased by werewolf. My lord, said the man in the taxi. He had a British accent. Ascent. How do you know she's a werewolf? She ate my homework, I shouted as I caught up to it. That doesn't prove she's a werewolf, said the man in the taxi. Perhaps she just likes to eat paper. I confess that. Never mind, I said as I ran past him. Take talking was using my upright brass I needed for running. I it paper myself, called the man in the taxi running after me. It's quite tasty, really. I don't see how eating your homework makes her a werewolf. Do you have any proof she's a werewolf? Just forget it, okay, I guess. We must have been a weird-looking group running down the street. First, Keith Spencer raised his camcorder. Right behind Spencer was... Behind Spencer, Spencer was me. Behind me was the man in the taxi leading his dog. And behind the dog was Mrs. Wolves. I'm quite serious, actually, called the man in the taxi. Deciding this woman is a rare of proof is terribly unfair. I said, forget it, I shouted. I looked back. Mrs. Wolves was gaining on me. Now she was almost up to the man in the taxi. 
I couldn't have overhearing called Mrs. Wolf Thanks for seeing my side of it. You're you're quite welcome, puffed the man in the tuxedo. It's the only silly thing to do. Oh, I quite agree," said Mrs. Wolvis, seeing both sides in the only kibble away way. Then Mrs. Wolvis sprang at me, bit a big hole in my seat of my pants. Chapter six. We ran for a few more blocks, then we lost Mrs. Wolvis. Spencer and I were completely out of breath. It was cold out, and I was really sweating under my clothes. Boy, that was a close one," gasped Spencer. It sure was," I said. We were still puffing so hard we could barely talk. Sweat was streaming down my face. My heart was beating like crazy. You know," I said. "Mrs. Common Levin lives only a few blocks from here. I think we need her help." "Good idea," said Spencer. I stopped at a pay phone to call that. I was afraid he might be worrying while I was. Zach said that when he answered the phone, "Where have you been? I was worried about you." You, I'm fine. I said, I'm with Spencer. We're going on an extra credit science project for school. Why are you so out of breath? Well, we were running. I said, Say, you aren't in any trouble, are you? No, I said. Does this have anything to do with Mrs. Wolfes? That asked. Maybe a little bit. I said. We are going over to Mrs. Tom Levin's place now. I'll be home soon. I hung up the phone before he could tell me not to go. A few minutes later, we buzzed Mrs. Tom Levin from the lobby of our building. She did a buzz back. She got on the intercom instead. Who's that? She asked. It's Zack and Spencer. I said. Zach and Spencer," she repeated. "What are you boys doing here?" "Oh," I said. "Well, we are having kind of a problem, and we thought you could help us." "I'm afraid this isn't a good time for me," she said. "Why not?" I said. "Are you seeing Mr. Conlevin?" "Not exact. Just a bit hazy." Mrs. Cumberland, this is really important. If you can possibly let us come up and talk to you, it would really help. I could hear hear her sigh over the inter intercom. Very well, she said. Come on up. But I told you I'm a bit hazy. We went up in the elevator. When she finally opened the, her door, it was a little hard to see her. Not because it was dark in her apartment, although it was dark in her apartment. It was because Mrs. Common Levin was really hazy. I could sort of see right through her. There were tons of palm trees in her apartment and a little waterfall. There was something burning. It smelled okay though. I remember what it was. Incense. So, boys," said Mrs. Kamleva. "What can I do for you? Our new substitute teacher, Mrs. Wolfis, is acting really weird." I said. "Weird in what way?" Well, yesterday she ate my homework," I said, "and tonight she bit a hole in my seat of my pants." Well, she must have have a perfectly good reason," said Mrs. Kamleva. "What reason could she possibly have for eating?" My homer and biting a hole in the seat of my pants. I showed her the hole in my pants. Zach, that's embarrassing," said Mrs. Kamleva. "Please sew up that hole as soon as you get home." Okay, I said. Mrs. Kamleva said, "Sir, we're pretty sure Mrs. Wilvis is a werewolf." A werewolf," said Mrs. Kamleva. "Hmm. Well, well, that's not surprising. I thought I not I noticed something odd about the woman." But somehow, the possibly she was a never, never, never entered my mind. I don't know why not. Mrs. Common Levin saw how sweaty we were. She insisted go we go in her bathroom and wash up. When we came back into her, the living room, strange music was playing. I forgot that what they called the instrument, but I know it from India. And she had made us some kind of weird tea. It tasted like flowers. I didn't like it too much, but I didn't want to hurt her feelings. How is your tea? Asked Mrs. Cumberland. Good, I said. Is this lab thing so strong? Asked Sir Spencer. Knows everything. I'm afraid I can't tell you that, says Mrs. Cumberland. All right, boys. This is what I've decided we must do. First, I shall phone Mrs. Wolfis at home. And convince her to come over here. 
You want her to come here? I said. Seeing Mrs. Wolfis again tonight was about the last thing I wanted to do. Excuse me, Mrs. Cumlove, said Spencer, but that doesn't sound like such a good idea. Why not, said Mrs. Cumlove? Mrs. Wolfis is scary, I said. I mean, she bites. Don't worry, said Mrs. Cumlove. I have a plan. We'll overpower her as soon as she comes in. Then we'll do something that will make it impossible for her to bite us. What are we going to do, Spencer asked. I'd rather not tell you too much about it, she answered, but it involves sprinkling powdered garlic, wolfspan, deadly nitrate, and cannon. I didn't see how sprinkling powdered garlic, wolfspan, deadly nitrate, and cannon was going to protect us. But when it comes to stuff like such a teacher who were who are werewolves, Mrs. Cumberland is definitely the expert. She gave Mrs. Wolves time to get home, then she phoned her. She told Mrs. Wolves she had to see her immediately to discuss tomorrow's lesson plan. Mrs. Wolves didn't seem too anxious to come over, but nobody I know has ever been able to say no to Mrs. Cumberland. She said she'd be over in about 10 minutes. I was pretty nervous about seeing her again, but Mrs. Kamaleva put us right to work getting ready. Ten minutes later, Mrs. Wolves was knocking on Mrs. Kamaleva's door. We were ready for her. Mrs. Kamaleva found an old hand mug made of rope. She, we reached it over the door. Spencer and I hid on both sides of the door. Each of us held us to one end of the hammock. Mrs. Kamaleva had mixed up a cup full of jelly, wolf, and deathly nightshade, and canip. Mrs. Kamaleva opened the door. Mrs. Wolfis was looking a lot wolfier, plus she was drooling. Mrs. Kamaleva threw the stuff from the cup in Mrs. Wolfis' face. At the same time, Spencer had tucked on both ends of the hammock. It fell right on top of her. What the? said Mrs. Wolfis. Pull, yes, Spencer. Spencer and I pulled tight on the ends of the hammock. Mrs. Wolfis was caught like an animal in a net. The stop Mrs. Kamaleva threw in her face must have been pretty strong because Mrs. Wolfis stopped struggling. She looked kind of sleepy. What are you doing to me? she asked. Trying to hug you, said Mrs. Kamaleva. She raised both her hands over Mrs. Wolves and began chanting in a spooky voice. Double bubble, well of double, hangs and ch claws and shaving stubble. There was a flash of blue light, and somewhere I heard the sound of thunder. Mrs. Kamaleva continued in her spooky voice. Holy creature of the night, I command you not to bite, not to swallow, or not to snap, just to take a teasing nap. When you awake, you won't be bushy. You'll have cheeks like a baby tushy. You won't be a wild creature, just a normal soft teacher. There was another flash of blue light and more thunder. Mrs. Wolby shook her hand. You don't understand, she said. You've got it all wrong. She looked pretty dead, and I noticed she was changing. Her face was getting hairier, and her teeth were definitely turning into fangs. Really, said Mrs. Kamaleva, are you damning that a creature of the night beat you and transform you into something hide us? No, no, she said. That's just what happened. I, but I'm not a teacher who was beaten by a wolf. I'm a wolf who ha was beaten by a teacher. Hey, come on, said, me, said Spencer. I swear, said Mrs. Wolves. One night... I'm in Yonkers with my husband and cubs. We're in a very woosty section near the Swall Sawmills Parkway. We're minding our own business, pouring through some garbage cans in back of a house. It's a full moon. We hear this particle noise. Along comes a pack of teachers looking for trouble. My husband and cubs got away. I wasn't so lucky I got bitten. You got bitten by a teacher, said Spencer. 
just a flesh one. So she said, it hardly broke my skin, broke the skin. And then what? I said, you started turning into a teacher. Not at first, said Mrs. Wolves. At first, I thought I was okay. I went back to my dad, licked my wounds, and went to sleep. The next morning at breakfast, my cubs were fighting over some papers we found in a garbage can. The papers had been used to rub meat from the butcher shop, so they were a little bloody. I actually heard myself say, "Eyes on our own papers, please." My oldest, my oldest wanted to go to the bathroom. I hear myself say, "Can you wait till Rissa's far out?" said Spencer. "Remarkable," said Mrs. Cumberland. The next day, said Mrs. Wolves, "I suddenly started walking on my hind legs." Legs. The day after that, I found myself at the mall buying a dress and sensible shoes. It was pretty scary. I don't have to tell you. What did you do then? I asked. What could I do? She said. I went into New York and joined the teachers. Union. The rest is history. I couldn't get a permanent job, but I was a darn good substitute, if I do say so myself. Although, although to tell you the truth, I think I was a bad wolf, and I miss my husband and cops. Say, is it hot in here or is it just me? Under the hammock, Mrs. Wolves took off her shoes. Her feet had turned to paws. Her legs weren't just hairy; they were furry. How come you ate my homework? I said, and bit a hole in the seat of my pants. Because you can take a wolf out of the woods, she said. But you just can't take the wolf out of the teacher. Mrs. Wolfies was becoming wolfier by the second. She had pointy wolf ears and a bushy tail. A minute later, she was a total wolf. You've been transformed back to what you were before your babies. Mrs. Kamleva, it seems my ceremony was successful. What would you like us to do with now? Mrs. Wolf's answer was kind of hard to understand. It was half talking and half growling. Excuse me, said Mrs. Kamleva. I said that I sure like to see my family again. Then Mrs. Wolf's. Mrs. Kamleva nodded. She went to the hall closet and came back with a dog collar and a leash. She pulled the hammock of Mrs. Wolves, helped her out of her clothes, and attached the collar and leash. Now then, who wants to go to Yonkers? asked Mrs. Kamleva. Mrs. Wolves threw her neck. Sorry, her head back and howled. I creeped me out at first, but. Then I realized it was a happy howl. Mrs. Kamleva, Spencer, and I took Mrs. Wolfes out of the apartment on the leash. Mrs. Kamleva was a very cool old ginger sitting in the basement garage. We all drove out to Yonkers and turned Mrs. Wolfes loose in the woods. She was all on all the fours now. But just before we drove away, I saw her lift one paw and wave. The next day, Mrs. Common Levin was back in homeroom, looking not at all happy because Vernon broke his promise and told on the told on me to Mr. Underpants. I told all the kids in my class that Vernon was a bad weather. They said they already knew. When homeroom was over, Mrs. Common Levin handed me a note in a sealed envelope. It was from Mr. Underpants. It said, after care consideration, I have decided not to suspend you, but kindly see to it that this sort of thing does not happen again. Mrs. Common Levin called me and Spencer aside. I reviewed the video tape you gave me. She said, I think you two boys have done some remarkable research. Research. Thank you. I said, thank you, said Spencer. I am willing to consider this an extra credit science project," she said. "On what condition? What's that?" I said. "That you never mention the video tape or the science project or the entire incident to anybody, because if you do, the magic I did in my apartment might stop working, and then something with this 
something like this could happen again. Only next time it will be worse, much worse. We agreed not to tell anybody, anyone and left the classroom. So that's pretty much what happened. I just had a terrible t thought though. I've just told you everything that happened. Does that mean this will all happen again, only much worse? The end of the Zephyrs, my teacher A, my homework by Dan Greenberg.